Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Finn, for, I mean, this uh, comprehensive, uh, let's say, uh, uh, summary of the uh, highlights or the key points that uh, uh, we discussed during these two days here uh, in this uh, in this seminar. I would be very short. I mean, the, um, our aim uh, is not, uh, you know, just to uh, encourage member states uh, to teach history or to teach a subject, etc. Our aim, even here in Tirana, would be to move from uh, the stage we are now with regard to the history, uh, teaching and education to a kind of uh, qualitative step forward. So uh, all the elements that were mentioned by my colleague Finn are very much related to what we call in the Council of Europe quality history education. So in this uh, quality history education, we put first uh, uh, the, as a prerequisite the existence of flexible curricula and then interactive curricula. So by that, we mean that teachers should have much more autonomy and should have pedagogical freedom, but also academic freedom to be able to adapt the learning objectives to the needs of the students that they have in the classroom. And as it was mentioned, this is also connected to the local histories that was mentioned by uh, uh, Fatmi Roche uh, uh, in her comments. Uh, um, we are here all Albanians, but with very diverse backgrounds uh, and then very diverse, let's say, life stories. And also we every uh, single student is unique. And so uh, every student has specific needs uh, uh, based on his background, the family, but also in terms of aspirations or perspective for the future. So we should be able through uh, uh, history uh, curricula and history teaching to uh, meet the needs or the specific needs of each and every student. So this is very important. And for this, we need two things. We need flexibility in the curricula application in the classroom, and we need interactivity. And for this, uh, the new technologies are one of the best way uh, to introduce interactivity, but we need also a uh, full recognition of the autonomy of teachers, pedagogical and academic. Uh, in that sense, we need also uh, academic freedom to be the fundamental value that should guide research in this area. And so uh, uh, in this context, the university, uh, the institutions that are in charge of research, etc., uh, but also other institutions like the authority for the or the archives or the authority or other museums, etc. They have this duty to carry out research guided by fundamental values and by academic freedom as a major uh, element of any democratic system. So this is uh, one of our, let's say, takeaway. So this is very uh, very important. And then the second, another second element is very much related to what we mentioned as, you know, uh, human face to the history teaching. And in that sense, the role of individuals and the role of individuals is not always black and white. I mean, all individuals have this yes. kind of multi-perspectivity approach and multicolor. One of our experts uh, 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 in the council uh, says history is a color kaleidoscope, kind of uh, multicolor. Uh, you cannot, you know, see the events of the past only in two ways, either black or white. Unfortunately, for many years in Albania, uh, we have been uh, used to see only one color, the color of the party. But I mean, since 30 years, we live in a free democratic or in transition, democratic transition society, and we need to see uh, diversity of different colors. Uh, then an important element is also that the history of uh, democracy or democratic society is a very complex one. Uh, it's not an easy process and we have seen this in Albania. So we thought at the 90, 91, 92, that we move as again, I said it at the beginning of this conference, that overnight we'll move from communism to democracy, but it's not easy. We are still discussing 
the major elements and aspect of a democratic society. So, and history education and education has a major role to play with uh, in this uh, in this regard. So, the stories of individuals, the complex history of democracy. Uh, but then we need also to see another type of diversity that is not always easy to see, or also in other European countries, the place of women and uh, the, the gender dimension in history is very important. Um, so we'd like also to see, I mean, there are a lot of testimonies now, there are a lot of resources that have been developed by uh, several actors with regard to the role of women in the Albanian history, but this should be uh, underlined even more. And then we need also uh, to uh, uh, enter in a kind of open dialogue and not be afraid of controvers controversial issues or sensitive issues. Uh, we are not going to decide what is true and what is wrong and what is good, etc. Uh, what is important when we teach and learn history is to uh, be in a kind of dialogue and uh, all together uh, try to find what is the historical truth or you know to be able to analyze all the facts etc cetera, etc cetera. so all these complexities should be should be reflected in the in the teaching in the teaching processes i know that it is not easy it's a very uh, uh, heavy task um, uh, the teaching let's say um, uh, profession uh, is not always the most attractive profession, not only in Albania, but also in other countries. Uh, uh, so uh, you should be passionate uh, if you'd like to become a teacher, not by just, you know, obligation, etc. cetera. Um, and then, uh, so there is a huge pressure on the, for the initial preparation of teachers uh, in the faculties of uh, education sciences, but also in other faculties that prepare future teachers. But, more importantly, we need also to very much insist on the in-service training of existing teachers, which is crucial because a great majority of existing teachers have been formed or educated under another type of uh, uh, system or under another type of pedagogies, methodologies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we need a little bit to advance more uh, quickly with new methodologies, new pedagogies, etc. And for this, the partnerships with uh, formal, non-formal, the role of research, but also partnerships with other actors. Albania is not an isolated country anymore. Uh, we need also to take the best of what we heard during these two days from Slovenia, Slovakia, Czech Republic, Poland, uh, Germany, Romania, uh, Serbia, uh, and other countries, and then be able to learn from the from the best practices that they are already putting uh, putting in place. So I hope also that the Council of Europe, as an intergovernmental international organization, is going to support this type of partnerships of uh, Albanian uh, actors of history education with other actors, uh, specifically for those that had a common uh, past, a communist past, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very important. And uh, at the same time here through our office in Tirana, we would like also very much to support the work of the, that, uh, or the initiative of the authority and uh, possibly to enlarge the, the network of institutions in order uh, to create a movement that would be supportive for the teachers to be able to exercise the freedom, but also the interactivity and uh, uh, create new opportunities for the students uh, uh, to learn uh, uh, better the history of their country and their families. Thank you.